Welcome back. We are draft season presented by the Knicks Wall and the Knicks Wall podcast. I'm Jess. He's Nick. We are not to be confused with the new girl cast. Nick, how are you? Oh, what a what a beautiful introduction. I'm doing a lot better now. I'm I'm happy to be here. It's been a long time and I'm I'm excited to get get started on some draft season. It has been a very long time. Um and we're going to talk about why that is a little bit here. I mean, straight up this year's very very different uh, in years past as long as I've been doing draft season. Uh I think technically this is my third year doing it. Um we're recording this on Thursday, May 20th. It'll probably come out a bit later than that. We're going to let the TKW Pod Boys keep it rolling while the Knicks are amazingly in the playoffs. Um the NBA's in the middle of the playing games and the Knicks are the 4 seed. And that is pretty much why our whole schedule is just completely different. Um well, in years past Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, just last year, our, our year was very different because there was no basketball or anything. So yeah. we had nothing but draft coverage for months on end. Now we we have no draft coverage for a different, much better reason. It It's true. Um, it, in years past, we started it in the middle of college basketball season to talk about potential prospects because we knew the Knicks would – at least be in the lottery and more recently top three um, and then top eight. Um, And that's not the case. And selfishly that, that kind of poses some issues for us, right? Because we have to look at this a completely different way than we've had to in years past. We really have to think about what other teams, what other front offices Uh, are going to be doing um what do you think the biggest obstacles are with how we're gonna have to go about this this year i think you kind of said it it's a lot more dependent on other teams there's always variables in the draft you you never know what other teams are going to do but this year when we're looking at 17 18 teams in front there's a lot of of variety of of things that could happen teams could trade in and out the Knicks could trade in and out they do have two picks that they could move up there's it's really hard to really give a a solid projection on what the draft will look like come the Knicks pick yeah um this is the first time the Knicks haven't been in the lottery since 2014 um and and let's take a step back and look at where the Knicks are in the draft um As of recording, we actually don't know. Uh, By the time you hear this, we probably will. But I did want to touch base on why we don't know at this time. And that's because the Knicks are in uh, ties for record with both their picks, right? So because of those ties, they're tied with Atlanta for either 19 or 20. And then... There's a three-way tie at 21, 22, and 23. Um, That's with, and that's the Mavs pick, and that's with Houston and L.A. Um, And apparently it's going to be decided on coin flips. Um, It's 2021, and we're still relying on coin flips, and I'm very confused by that. I love a good game of chance. I know you do, but... It's just kind of blows my mind. Uh, I'm cool with the two team coin flip. I <laughs> there it, are it is, no three sided coins as far as I know. It, it's just funny to me that the NBA draft decides pick order in the same way that Survivor picks vote ties. 
All of our Gilmore Girls and whatever references we've had in the past are all going to turn into Survivor references this year, aren't they? Look, the Knicks just have to hope they get the right colored rock. For those of you curious, Nick and I spent a majority of quarantine binging Survivor. I'm currently binging Australian Survivor, and my inner voice is now Australian. Um, Both happy and sad to report that fact. But it kind of works because, and if we do talk about some of these guys that the Knicks unfortunately will not get, one of them is Josh Giddy, and I can profess my love for him. Um, but yeah, I guess, do you think, you know, in watching the playoffs, like, do you have a good sense of at least the type of player the Knicks want to draft? Are you still looking at these, um, playoff games to try to decide that do you think the playoffs will have any impact on like the type of player the Knicks are going to start looking at I think yes and no we have a pretty this Knicks team has a very clear identity and we have a pretty good idea of of the strengths and weaknesses and, and what they could add to to bolster that current roster the mm-hmm. playoffs always do show a little bit, and I think more so of the the star players. Of we'll see, we'll see what RJ can really bring out in the playoffs, and that will tell us a lot with the draft. I I will say, as far as draft needs, it's interesting, and and you and I have talked off pod, and I think this will be a an interesting debate for Knicks fans going into the draft. Is that the biggest area of need is still. Alfred Payton. It's still point guard. It's still the same conversation we've been having the last couple of years. The draft has looked at that. Last year we talked at length before the lottery about a guy like Lamelo or or someone like Killian Hayes falling to the Knicks after the lottery. But I don't know if if the Knicks upgrade at point guard is going to be coming at the nineteenth pick or if if that's going to be another another outlet like free agency or trades to to upgrade the starting point guard position. Yeah, for me, my first thought is go get someone like Lonzo, Lowry, someone like that. If they want to take a swing at a point guard, especially if they keep those two picks. um, Yeah, and if that point guard's Sharif Cooper, I'm, I'm cool. Sure. I'm also thinking more like I want someone who I think will be maybe a little bit more ready and just has a little bit more experience. So my mind immediately goes to Chris Duarte from Oregon. And I think he will be in that range. Everything I've seen has had him in that range. Sharif's a very interesting uh, example because I feel like he's been there was a lot of highs on him like before the season then we had him not playing at first because of whatever with the NCAA his season when he did play it was okay and then they weren't allowed into the NCAA tournament um or they like self-impose a ban which is like the dumbest thing I think but um yeah a guy like Sharif is is really interesting well, I, I, we'll talk more about Sharif, and throughout this run, I will I will talk about Sharif ad nauseum. Mm-hmm. He is, if not my favorite prospect, he's a very on the, on the short list. I absolutely love his game, but I do want to touch on something you said, which was a more ready ready made prospect. We talked a lot last year. We had a whole podcast about the high floor guys. And we'll talk exactly. about the, those sort of players again. I would one thing I would really like to see the Knicks do if they keep those two picks is take one guy that's more of a high upside, maybe a project type that that projects out well for the future, and one guy that can contribute pretty much immediately and is that sort of ready-made high floor. Yeah. And also something I remembered while when I was looking up the history of the Knicks picks to see the last time they were out of the lottery, they still have Leandro Balmero, who hasn't come over yet. Am I is that right? Did I mess that up? That that was in the trade. Was he in the Or I well, not for the that was the trade for the IQ draft pick. Oh. They traded That's down weird. they 
They Never traded, mind. I lied. They traded up, took Bomero, traded back down. Right. I believe Minnesota has his rights. Oh, right. Never mind. I lied. It's, it's fine. I, w- I would love that. but. Uh, Well, they also have Luca coming over, too. So, that's another thing. Which, I, th- I think the guys on the TKW pod have talked about. I know we've talked about it, you know, on the site and things like that. Uh, that whole situation is still kind of weird to me in terms of, like, the fact that they're paying him for this year, but really only going to, you know, work him out this summer and decide if he's going to stay. Uh, I think partly that was to get above the cap floor, but, um, yeah. Uh, I'm just bringing up because the thing, so we're talking about, you know, like having these two picks so close together, like take a project and then take like a sure thing. But their third pick is very, like it's what second in the second round. Uh, yeah. 32nd pick. So that's three really good picks there. It's hard for me to think that they're going to keep all three just because of how close they are. But I don't know what that turns into. Is that trading up? Is that trading for someone? I don't know. Or is that trading down or trading for a future? Right? You might but, just Yeah. You might just turn 32 into a a protected first next year. Or True. something like that. If there's somebody that has fallen, we've seen we see those kind of trades every year. Where there's somebody that that has fallen into that sort of range, that a team is willing to to trade a bit and, and kind of buy high on, so the Knicks could just look at that sort of situation as well. Yeah, and so we started talking about this um, on Slack with like a few of the writers that are going to be doing draft profiles and things like that because Reed was trying to figure out like any type of schedule like needed just some names that we are potentially going to be writing about on the site because again we it's really hard to try to decipher like who we're going to talk about and we have you know a shorter window even though the draft is later we have a shorter window to do that because we're obviously focusing focusing on the playoffs right now and a lot of times you know you go into the draft and you think about what position you want to improve on, right? What position um, can you get a player that's better than the current starter, right? But I think with the range that these picks are, you don't have to hit a home run. You And you don't have to think of it as like, obviously a lot of people want a starting point guard over Alfred, but like what if it's, we want to upgrade. We don't want to upgrade a starting position. We want to upgrade a bench position. Like we want to upgrade a, over Kevin Knox. We want to upgrade over Frank. Like I think that is also we another way up- you have to look at. It. Yeah, I think it's a it's a real logical thing to say. We want to upgrade over any of the last four first round draft picks that aren't RJ. Eek. Yeah. I still have hope for Obi. I. I do. It's, it's it's too early. It's too early to give up. Yeah. I can't say I'm optimistic personally, but I'm I'm hopeful. I I wish that there had been a normal G League season. I think he really missed out on potentially maybe doing a little bit of like going up and down. Um, I think that could have been good for him if that had happened. Um. So we'll see what he's able to do over the summer, you know? I think if he can keep his shot going in the right direction, that can only help him. Um, Also, I feel like these guys didn't have a lot of time to, like, play together Um, preseason. There was no summer league as well. Yeah, so even just getting to work with... RJ work with Julius try to figure out how he fits in with them I think will be important um 
But actually, now that we're talking about, like, summer league and things like that, let's get a little bit into, like, the dates of things happening. So, just some key dates we have right now are the Combine. Um, that is June 21st to 27th. Um, the lottery is during that time. It's June 22nd. And then the draft isn't until July 29th, which is super late, as you pointed out pre-pod. Um, and then there is going to be, they just announced there is going to be a summer league, which is in August. Um, I'm just pulling up those dates right now. I think it's entirely going to be in Vegas, right? And... uh. Where are we at here? August 8th to 17th is when Summer League is. Um, All 30 teams are going to be there. It's all in Vegas. That'll be cool, I think. Um, To have it all in one place. All the the teams there. Um, And again, to just be able to have those games and to see the young guys play together um, will be good. Um, but you know, I, I think we, I just, we just, you know, for this first pod, we kind of just wanted to set the stage for draft season. I think what we want to do is kind of start more broadly. We'll maybe, I think next episode we'll talk about, um, what went down in the college season, just some overarching storylines, themes, some of our favorite guys, maybe talk a little bit about the G league also. Specifically, the G League Ignite team. Um, And as we move along, you know, we'll start narrowing in on the Knicks. But I think it's important to start broader and think about who's going to, who are those top picks, who those top picks are, who's going to be picked before it's time for the Knicks to, so that we can kind of narrow the list down. Um, so, so what you're saying is that that's a really good excuse for us to talk about Kate Cunningham and Jalen Suggs. Ugh, my love knows no bounds for Jalen Suggs is all I have to say. He put his first promo up and I think it was for Wells Fargo and it made me want to get a Wells Fargo account. That's all I can say. A wonderful bank. I, I support Wells Fargo. Uh, I do not. Wells Fargo, I am not a patron. If you would like to drop the bag for draft season, we do accept bribes. We love bribes. We've never gotten a bribe. You could be our first bribe. We'd be down. Um, but yeah, is there anything you want to add for this first shindig? Um, if we don't... I was just looking through some of the, the prospects I talked about in, in my big picture evaluation, but we'll talk about them next week. Mm-hmm. So there's just there's so many options. There's so many guys to talk about. This is a class that is coming in with a lot of expectations, whereas last year there was a, a lot of negativity towards that class. Yeah, I think the depth of last year's class was super undervalued. You look at a guy like Hal Burton, who's now one of three Rookie of the Year candidates. Guys, you know, uh, Peyton Pritchard doing well for the Celtics. Um, oh, I know, I know what you're... Is, is it finally time for my victory lap? Let's do it. Let's oh, talk briefly vic- about last year's prospects yeah. and why Jess knows more than most of all of draft <laughs> Twitter. Listen, all I'm saying is <sighs> Isaiah Stewart makes my heart sing. That's all I have to say. And he made me look smart and he did all the things I said he was going to do. He did the things I thought he'd be able to do, but even I, I don't think I even thought he was going to shoot the ball that well that quickly, albeit it's, you know, not as many attempts as some guys, but when he shoots it, man, the Pistons are like, 
The amount of Pistons basketball I watched this year is actually disgusting. It's more than I have watched in my lifetime times like three, probably. It was bad. It was a sickness. Takes a brave soul. It was fun, though. Blake owes them money. He pretended to be a shell of himself, and now he's in Brooklyn throwing behind-the-back passes, and he's back to dunking when he didn't believe in going inside the three-point line while he was in Detroit. He should pay the Pistons money. And Sadiq, our boy Sadiq. Killing it. Sadiq was someone we were high on last year. Um, I think there were a few guys. Desmond Bain was someone that we were very right about. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about everyone we were right about. Look, some we're not perfect, but sometimes things are, are really simple and guys with like elite shooting ability are going to be successful in the NBA. Yep. Oh, thank you, Isaiah. This is my victory lap. So you were I, right. I want to use that Pistons. I have a conversation for us that I did not okay. prepare you. That I did not prepare you for. But it's talking okay. talking about the Pistons got me thinking. Every year we watch, as Knicks fans, we watch the lottery with far too much emotional investment. Mm. This year, this year we get to watch the lottery with less, but we still have our own opinions, our own preferences, teams we we like, teams we want to see. There are just objectively teams that are more fun and teams that are less fun. And, you know, there's teams like, Whoever you, you you don't really enjoy watching Detroit Cleveland teams that come to mind, but both teams that are getting younger and getting more exciting. Who do we want to see hit the lotto realistically for these? We really have a, a top five that stands above and beyond the rest of the draft, which right. makes and and a number one pick that has been called generational by some and makes this lottery even more important to be able to land in, in those those picks. There's a couple of teams that could gain or lose picks in the depending on protection. Houston with their pick to OKC, Minnesota with their pick to Golden State. Who do we want to see? Who are we rooting for come lottery night? What is the most fun, exciting outcome? So the thing for me is I just want everyone to be happy. And because of that, if the Rockets don't get the number one pick, with everything that they've gone through this season, with trading away Harden, just this very bad season, if they don't get Cade, that is a disaster. Forget about not getting Cade. What if their pick hits four and it goes to OKC? Which, because that's a, t- I'm checking that protection. I believe it's top I just, three. All right. So I just sim Tankathon mm. and they dropped to five and it went to OKC. So I want to say this. I am rooting so hard for that pick to go to OKC. OKC <laughs> getting OKC's two. OKC is ridiculous. Them getting two top five picks. If, if their pick hits Cade, which look. Give me Cade or Suggs with SGA, and that is just beautiful. And then if they get Houston's pick, too, and they get five, and you can get a guy like Kuminga, maybe? I don't know. How how dare you not mention Poku, our beloved baby deer? If we're going to take if we're gonna take <laughs> victory laps, it's early, but I called Poku the highest ceiling in the draft last year. I that's a team that did not win a lot of games that I watched a ton of. They are so much fun. There's so many young guys. I I love this Thunder team. Oh my god, I just had a ridiculous tankathon sim. Are you ready for this? Hit me. The Hornets moved up 10 places <laughs> to 1. <laughs> Pelicans moved up 6 to 2. Bulls moved up seven to three, and everyone else moved down. <laughs> now, during during the NCAA tournament, to go back to your question, I did an awful lot of simming on Tankathon because they have Corey Kisper pretty high still, and they did 
back then. I think he may be dropping a little bit, partly because, I mean, I think that national championship game hurt him. But I simmed Tankathon so many times to get Suggs and Kispert on the same Orlando Magic team. Do I really want them both on the Magic? No, it was just that was the team that had two picks and it worked out that way. Um, yeah, or- Orlando is a team that's interesting. So I would say it's not the the flashiest or most exciting lottery team, but they do have a lot of interesting young young picks, young players. Sorry, and and guys, I like you know Cole Anthony, RJ Hampton from last year's draft. We talked about a lot for both of them as potential Knicks players. They're going to be interesting going forward, and if they were to add. You know, a guy like Kate or a guy like Suggs, and then they're able to to add someone like Kispert as a real solid guy. It's a really interesting core. Um, I did a tank myself here, and this is exactly what I was talking about, where OKC gets one and Houston drops to five, and OKC also gets that. That's that's just oh my god. If if that happens, the Oklahoma City Thunder are immediately like the most exciting team for the future. It might be that anyway, but... Right. I... So... As it stands, the Pistons are at two, which Tankathon has Evan Mobley. I would maybe have Suggs over Mobley, but that's a lot of bias on my part. Um, Would be a bit concerned um, having Mobley go there with Isaiah there. I do think they could play together. I think Isaiah proved that he's mobile enough to to be at the four spot. Um, I, back to the Thunder. I, I've had a conversation about interesting uh, – with a, a good friend of mine who's a Thunder fan – about interesting possibilities with the Thunder having so many future assets and, and such an absurd amount of draft capital that let's say they, they end up at seven <laughs> – is that a situation where they could then move up to a team like Detroit? If Detroit's like, if Detroit feels confident in Isaiah and, and, and doesn't want to take Mobley, like they could potentially trade down to, to OKC for a boatload of future capital. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know, they Killian got hurt during the year. Um, but I think they have a lot of faith in him. I think Sadiq will end up on, at least the second rookie team, maybe first. I have to go back and look now that we saw the three. Like, I was pretty sure all three would make it, but I wasn't sure with LaMelo's injury how that was going to affect him um, for all rookie team. Um, Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. I mean... And even, you know, there are teams in the lottery that should be looking to win now, right? The, Toronto still has some variables. What happens with Kyle Lowry in particular? But Toronto mm-hmm. sitting at the seventh best lottery odds. That's a team that, whether they move that pick or you know, hit the lottery and, and take a guy like Kate, that they're going to be trying to compete immediately, which is different than someone like Cleveland, who's still in that that rebuild process around younger guys. A, a team that's very interesting is the Golden State Thunder. Sorry, the, the Golden State what? Warriors. I'm still I'm still thinking about I'm doing lotteries, just rooting for the Thunder every time. Um, the Golden State Warriors are a team that, as of right now, the the odds would would project favorably to that that pick conveying this year for from Minnesota. It's top three protected. Minnesota is sitting at the the sixth best odds Mm -hmm. so that you know could go to the four four spot for golden state that that's an interesting move or that hits for minnesota and they get golden state gets their unprotected next year there's a just there's a lot of of interesting puzzle pieces right now in the lottery you know those back-end teams like sacramento or, or new orleans again teams that would be trying to win now charlotte a, a team that was competitive this year and looking to compete. If if something crazy were to happen, like your tank, where both of them get move up, it would it'd be interesting. 
Yeah, and... I don't know. You gotta love the storyline of Cade going to Oklahoma State and then staying in Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean... That's kind of dope. Le- Le- um, LeBron-esque there. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know. I it's gonna be interesting. These these lottery art odds are still bizarre to me. Fourteen percent. It's crazy. Fourteen percent. I remember like <laughs> it's just it's crazy. Like I remember like the RJ draft, right? Just like I still can't believe the Pelicans got that. Oh man. Well, but, look, uh, we're, we're all very happy with RJ, so I, I don't say this. I'll, I'll actually even change what I was going to say. That draft was a good example of a three-person top, right? And you could argue mm-hmm. two and then RJ, which was the case at the time. But it was a three-person. It was Zion, Ja, RJ, then everybody else. Mm-hmm. This year's interesting because I, I think it's five. Right. It's, so it's your G League let's... guys, Suggs, Mobley, Cade. Yep. So, and those G League guys are Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga, who did did show some things in the G League for sure. Um, yeah, it, I think it, it, there is a general consensus that it's five. And um, then, because I, I think six, and we'll see, obviously, projections will change and, and guys will have good workouts, bad workouts, whatever. But I, I think you could. You could tell me right now that six could be five different players, but five those top five will be the top five. Right. Yeah, I feel you. I agree. Um It's and it's also different because those five are the top five, but that order could other than Cade, I think, could be vastly different for other for certain teams. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a great point, especially some of these teams that are more um, need-specific, a team that's trying to compete, a team like, again, t- Toronto, I would have to imagine with having very, very little depth at at bigs on their roster would prioritize Mobley over any of those other players, right? Where some of mm-hmm. them may, may look at Suggs as, as the guy, as, as I think you would probably have Suggs at number two on your board. Mhm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting and we will get all into it in the next 11 weeks. Which is crazy. But yeah, July 29th is the big day. Um like I said, you guys probably won't be hearing hopefully you won't be hearing from- this for like a few weeks because that means the Knicks beat the Hawks and keep it rolling but we'll see um that's all I got what do you got anything not yet not yet yet being the operative word dope all right well obviously catch us on TKW I'm sure once the writing staff has things all figured out, you'll be able to read Nick's stuff. Um, <laughs> Nick's stuff. Uh, <laughs> Nick's writing. Oh, th- it doesn't work at all. The the Nick without the K. You'll be able to read that stuff eventually. Yeah, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna say you you can read my my blanket overview. There's I talked about some of my favorite favorite prospects. I talked about the. The top three college guys, Mobley, Suggs, and, and Cade, talked about Cade at length, and we'll continue to talk about Cade at length because he, he's worthy of our time and conversation. But I talked about some other guys, someone like Sharif Cooper, who I mentioned, who I'm, I'm very high on, and, and I'll, I'll be talking a lot about throughout throughout this process. But you can read some thoughts and get some initial initial insight to some of those guys in the the mid mid late lottery mid first kind of tier that I was I was kind of keying in on cool and I'm not a writer but I'm a tweeter so you can look at my random things uh gonna try to do maybe a little bit more video this year 
due to getting synergy this year, which is fun. So looking at guys a little bit more in that light. Um, yeah. So I'm at jryan44. He is at not the fake NC with a bunch of underscores between each one of those. It's not a bunch. It's the it's one underscore between each word. It's the rational amount of underscores. But like it can be rational and also a lot. It's fair. It's like the amount of they can. It's like the amount of ends in my name. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> all right guys that is all we have for this time we will catch you on the next draft season <laughs>